everybody. Welcome back to Edge Sports Network. We got another interview for you guys today. We got Everett Hammond, USC Upstate Men's Basketball. Everett, glad to have you on. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Um, and I'll start with this right here. I mean, how have you kind of been staying busy this off season with the pandemic going on? You know, how's training looks for you, and just how's everything kind of been in general? Uh, everything at first was a little crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably when the government shut down everything the first two weeks, I probably couldn't really get in the gym, so I just played pickup outside and worked out. But now mm-hmm. things are open, so I'm in the gym every day. Mm-hmm. I work out four to five times a week, and I lift about three to four times a week. So just working out, trying to stay in game shape, get, sure. get pickups in, my skill work. So it's been going good. I'm glad to hear that. I know it's been pretty tough, but things starting to kind of get back to normal now, slowly but steadily. So um, that's always good to see. And hopefully, you know, things just keep heading in the right direction. So we'll see what happens there. I know this past season, I mean, you were great this past year. Your team's leading score, you averaged 14.5 points per game, you know, nearly five rebounds, two assists, shot the ball at about 40 percent. Um, so, I mean, coming into this year, how would you feel? I know it's your second season that you were coming into. So how did you just, you know, feel overall this year, second year with the program? Did you feel much more comfortable than your first season? Yeah, I felt a lot more comfortable knowing the system um, offensively. We changed our defensive system a little bit, so everyone had the same learning curve. But mm-hmm. I kind of kind of had a concept of what the defense was like just being under the system, mm-hmm. same coaches, and just knowing that he trusted me and that I just had to make sure I can deliver every game and just try to be consistent. So, I've, I mean, I had a good level of uh, comfortability going mm-hmm. into the season. So For sure. I know that first season you played 19 minutes per game. So, you know, for a first-year athlete, that's a pretty good amount of play time. You don't see every guy get that. How do you feel like that kind of helped you get prepared for, you know, later on in your career here? Coming into that first year, I know it can be quite a transition. So how would you kind of feel like that first season kind of got you ready? Uh, it did get me ready uh, mm-hmm. big time because I started the season. One of our best players, he broke his hand, so I started the season actually starting. Mm-hmm. So I kind of was just thrown into the fire quick. Yeah. So I had a big learning curve, and I got to see how teams play defenses, how real the scouting was, mm-hmm. how fast the game was. So that early part, I was just adjusting. And then when he came back, I, I, came, I went to a bench role, but I was still playing good minutes. Mm-hmm. So I was still learning everything. And then towards the end of the season, another another one of our star players actually broke his hand. So I ended up oh. starting again. And then towards the end of the season, I was real comfortable. I ended the season real strong. Mm-hmm. Like the last seven games, I was scoring double digits pretty consistently. Mm-hmm. So then I used that momentum to the off season to, to keep working, get bigger, get stronger, work on my game, get better as a player. And then I think all that carried me into having a, a good sophomore year. Certainly saw it in the second season. I mean, to have that play in your first year, not only just to play, but to actually get starts too. I'm sure that was really helpful. And I want to talk about that first college game that you had. What was kind of the biggest difference that you noticed between high school basketball and college basketball once you got your, you know, your first minutes? I think the biggest difference was just in high school, a really good player or a good player can take plays off. Mm-hmm. and still be dominant. In college, you can't take a single playoff because that may cost you the game. And just the speed and the strength of those dudes are just it was ridiculous my first game. Mm-hmm. So I think those were the two biggest differences I saw from high school to college. Definitely a change in pace, and you have to be ready every single play. I know I've talked with a lot of guys, and they say kind of that same thing. You You really have to be on your game for the entire 40 minutes. So um, I know that... You know, you got to get adjusted to that, but you got adjusted well. You had a really productive first season, built off of it this second year. Uh, you've played two seasons in the program now. I want to ask you, throughout those first two years, what's kind of been your favorite memory of college basketball so far? Uh, mm, team-wise or personal? Uh, you know what? Let's go both. Let's go both. Team-wise favorite moment and then personal favorite moment. Okay, I- Team wise, I would say um, just at those after the game victory locker room. Just mm-hmm. how excited everybody is. 
I would say that's the best feeling team wise. And going on the road and getting big wins. But mm-hmm. road wins are tough in college. So yep. it's like winning two games almost. And then personally it would definitely be the game when a shot I hit against uh-huh. Presbyterian on ESPN. Yep. So I, that would definitely that would definitely be my personal moment. Oh, that's got to be top moment right there. I was actually going to ask you about that. I mean, in that game, you guys were tied at 74. I think you had like, what, four or five seconds left in that one? And Mm -hmm. you bring the ball down the court. Well, first you inbounded it. Ball came back to you. You bring it down the court. You hit the game-winning shot at the buzzer. How do you kind of have that mentality, that clutch mentality to stay calm in that moment? Because that right there, that's what every kid dreams of right there, hitting that game-winning shot. Um, so how do you kind of stay calm in that moment? Walk us through those last four seconds. What was kind of going through your head? Well, the, at first, the refs had stopped the play. They went to go see how much time was on because in this day, were giving us two seconds. Mm-hmm. So in our head, we were like, it would probably be a half-court shot. So the most logical thing is we were expecting to go to overtime, but then the ref gave us about two to three more seconds. Mm-hmm. So we said, okay. And this day, our coach said we're going to score. And I was kind of thinking – Okay, I want to see how they play because I was the inbounder, man, mm-hmm. and they were trying to get it to our point guard, and he would have options. He would have me on the trail. He would have a chance to maybe go finish or kick it to the corners. And I was like, okay, I want to see how they played them. And when they denied him heavy, mm-hmm. I threw it to our big man, and he threw it back to me. So I was speeding up the court. I took about two to three dribbles, and I looked up. It was about one second. I said, okay, I right, time for me to get it off. And then when I shot it, it instantly felt good. So uh-huh. in those big moments, I try to just stay as calm as I can. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, every kid dreams for that. So you practice that as a kid. And, I mean, I know I worked hard my whole off season for moments like that. So I just try to stay as calm as I can. You looked calm. You made the shot. I'm sure that must have been a great feeling um, afterwards right there. Maybe a little surreal for a couple seconds afterwards once you saw you made it. Um, but, yeah, that I, w- I, was, I had a feeling that was going to be your favorite personal moment right there. Um, and it's definitely a good one too. So hopefully we see some more game winners from you in the future. I'm sure we will. Uh, you got that clutch gene. Um, I want to go back now, you know, just to kind of before college and whatnot, you know, growing up, when did you kind of realize that you wanted to play college basketball or even, you know, play at higher levels? At what point did you kind of notice that you had a chance to be playing at high caliber levels? And when did you kind of want to pursue that? I'll probably say I started really wanted to pursue college basketball around the age of 12, 13. Mm-hmm. And I, cause I would always uh, go to the gym with older dudes. And a lot of those guys, they were in high school grinding, getting after it for college offers. Mm-hmm. And I would always play against them. So I kind of looked up to a lot of those guys and then they would talk to me about the process and stuff. So, and then when I turned about 14, 15 years old, that's when I realized, okay, I can definitely get a scholarship. I think around that time in AAU, I started receiving my first college interest. They were calling my AAU coaches. So mm-hmm. I think around that age is when I started realizing that I can make this dream happen. I just got to work hard. And with AAU, I mean, how did that kind of help you? I know the competition there is obviously – you got some of the best competition in the country running through the AAU programs. How that kind of gets you ready and what kind of things did you take out of AAU that you've kind of brought to this next level with you? Uh, AAU's competition was crazy. I played on the unarmed circuit, mm-hmm. so it was great players, NBA pros to this day I was playing against. So I kind of just took the dog mentality that, I mm-hmm. mean, it's dog-eat-dog out there, so you got to you gotta bring it every single day or, mm-hmm. you know, that you losing money every day. You don't bring it in because yeah. everyone's fighting for your college chips. For sure, for sure. So I, I bring know. that mentality to college. Yeah, I mean, that's perfect right there. I know. Uh, from what you just said there, it's kind of similar in AAU to college because you have to imagine most of those guys in AAU go in Division One, and then nearly all of them are going to play college basketball. So I know you had mentioned earlier that you can't take you know any plays off in college basketball. Kind of got to do the same thing in AAU right there. Uh, what kind of led you to USC Upstate? I mean, can you walk us through your college decision process here and just how the visit went? What had you hooked on the school? Okay, so the assistant coach, Stacey Palmore, came. They offered uh, my best friend on the team and and a player right now, current player, Brandon Martin. They had offered him probably a couple of days before they came to see him. We were in St. Thomas More in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And so when they came to see him, 
I played well in open gym that day. And then Coach Stacy took my number down, started talking to me. And I want to say they either offered me later that day or they offered me the next day. And so then we set up an official visit. So when I went up for my official visit, um, the visit was good. I had a good time. I enjoyed mm-hmm. the coaches. I liked the family atmosphere that the players gave towards me and the coaches. So, and that's what, that's what I was looking for, someone I can trust in and and uh, have a family atmosphere. So then after that, I decided that, that I think that was the best fit. And I thought I could, I could do well, mm-hmm. have a good career there for four years mm-hmm. and leave my, and leave my legacy. So, I think I made a great decision. I think you did too. You're off to a good start here in your first two seasons. Um, definitely, I'm sure you're looking forward to build upon it this upcoming season. So what are some goals that you have for yourself and for your team this year? I know you'll be an upperclassman this year, so maybe stepping into more of a leadership role. So what are you kind of looking forward to this upcoming season? I mean, team-wise, I think, our ultimate goal is to win the conference mm-hmm. and go to the NCAA tournament. I mean, that's every person and every coach's goal on our team. Mm-hmm. We have everyone returning. We have good players returning. Our top scorers are back, top rebounders, top defenders. So we didn't lose. We lost one person last year. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, for the most part, everyone's back. So we should be ready to rock and roll, and that's our main goal. Mm-hmm. And if i probably say another – team goal we would say is to beat a power five school Mm -hmm. and personally i mean just be a a integral part in leading that team to the ncaa tournament uh player of the year in the big south and all conference those are those are my personal goals i think if i can do that i mean i think i don't see why we can't go to the tournament no doubt about it i like those goals right there um, I'm glad to see that you kind of have the right mindset in an off season like this when it's definitely for everyone. It's been hard to kind of stay um, focused on things mentally for sure, just with everything going on. So it's really good to see that you still have that mentality. You're still staying focused, setting the goals high for this upcoming season. And I'm sure you guys are going to have a great year. I'm just hoping you guys get started on time here. Hope you guys have the most normal schedule as possible. I know a lot of the conferences are switching things up right now, um, but we'll see what happens. I'm hoping everything's fine. How have you guys kind of been staying connected, you know, keeping team chemistry up during this time? Have you guys kind of been doing, like, online Zoom calls and stuff like that? Yeah, we, so we do a Zoom call at least once every two weeks. With the That's coach, good. Team. That's good. Then I talk to guys on the team. We have a group chat as a team, so we communicate in there. So we do different things to stay in touch with each other. That's good. That's good because I know, obviously, right now, um, not a lot of, you know, personal in-face, person-to-person interactions going on and what's the, and whatnot. Um, are you back on campus yet, or do you know when you're getting back to campus? No, we every player has to return to campus by August 2nd. Okay. Okay, so coming up, yeah, still home right now? Yes, sir. All right. Well, yeah, that's good. I mean, hopefully travel isn't too bad. I'm I'm assuming you're driving out there. I'm assuming. Yeah, I always drive. All right. That's perfect then. That's always good. Um, That'll be a little bit of a, a safer bet, I'd say, than flying right now. So I think you're in good shape there. Um, To kind of close up here, I like to end on a few fun questions. And then the last question is the million-dollar question, as we say. I mean, it's one you might have thought about. You might not have thought about it. We'll get to it. Uh, so first off here, if you could kind of describe your play style in three words, how would you describe it? Smooth. Finesse. Mm-hmm. And. Mm, mm, third one. Uh, third one's always the toughest. It's always the toughest. Uh, smooth, finesse. Mm. Cerebral. There we go. Those are some. Those are good three words right there. I think those might be the best three words we've heard right there. So, good choices. I gotta give it to you there. Most guys go with with pretty basic answers, but those kind of went outside the box. So I like that right there. Um, my second fun question for you here: If you could you know, play alongside any NBA player, past or present, 
Who would have been why? LeBron James. There you go. Because, I mean, that's my favorite player. Mm-hmm. I like to score the ball, and he likes to be a playmaker. So mm-hmm. I, I would definitely love to play with LeBron James. Not a bad choice. You got LeBron or Jordan as the greatest of all time? LeBron James. All right. See, we got a, we have a lot of disagreement on that question um, between guys that come on. I think most of the guys we've had have said Jordan. So, um, you know, I think you a, – a few guys have said LeBron. Um, but you're one of the, the few guys, cause you know, you know why most guys are saying Jordan? Cause of the documentary that just came out, I feel like, but uh, yeah, that didn't. Yeah. So that, that was a great documentary. You know, I don't, I, I'm really up in the air about it. See, I, we grew up, I grew up in Massachusetts. We're based in Massachusetts. So I don't have the most love for LeBron cause he knocks my team out every single season or he did with Cleveland. Um, so I'm usually team Jordan, but. I have a lot of respect for LeBron. Uh, I just wish he wasn't as good as he was, so we didn't send the Celtics packing every single season. But uh, we'll see what happens this year with this this bubble, um, this tournament format they kind of got going on with the last eight games of the year. Uh, I know LeBron's got a good chance to get another finals here, so we're going to see what happens. But I'm sure you're looking forward to NBA returning, as kind of everyone is. Um, third question for you here. This is the last fun one before we get into that last question. But uh, if you could say something that people might not know about you, like a fun fact, what's something that people like wouldn't know about you otherwise, um, something that you kind of keep on the down low or just a hidden talent you have, really anything? I'm a great chess player. Are you? Mm-hmm. Great chess and checkers player. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I... No, I'm not good at chess, so I'll tell you that you you definitely uh, take the win against me. I've never really played it. Uh too complicated for me, so a lot of a lot of credit to you right there, but um definitely a good fun fact. You ever play with any guys on the team? No, I haven't played anybody on the team. I played a couple people at my school though, like other people. I don't know if anyone on our team plays it, but I mean I play people all the time. There you go. You uh, what would you say your your winning percentage is? Is it up there? It's got to be up there, right? I don't lose. I probably lost three chess games, maybe one time in checkers, but I mean, there you go. I go against them, they never win. That's what we like to hear right there, you know, staying confident on the court and off, getting the chess wins, getting the basketball wins, kind of doing it, uh, doing it all around here, the full package. Um, to close up, you know, this is the question we always like to end on or something similar to this. If you could kind of craft up the ideal scenario for yourself let's say five years down the road, in the year 2025, what would kind of be the perfect situation for Everett Hammond? Perfect situation, I'll be making money, doing something I love. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be situated, my family will be situated, and I'll be about 26, so I should hopefully by then almost, I should probably be soon becoming a father. Mm-hmm. And no, not a father. Actually, not that's too early. <laughs> I'd probably say just doing something, doing something I love, basketball wise. Definitely mm-hmm. making money playing basketball and having myself and my family situated. So I would say that's the ideal. But... That's perfect, right there. Kind of the the dream goal, and um, you know you're on your way for sure. Great first two seasons here at USC Upstate. Uh, congrats, you know, on a great sophomore season. Wishing you nothing but the best of luck. For this upcoming year, um, not only yourself, but the team as well. Hoping you guys stay safe and healthy uh, throughout the entire season. And I'm hoping you guys have as normal a year as possible. Obviously, some things still getting situated, but wishing you nothing but the best of luck. And Everett, thanks so much for joining us here on the site today. It was great having you on. We'd always be happy to have you on again. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. No problem at all. We'll make sure to put your Instagram down below. So people can go follow your career journey. We'll throw a link to that. And we'll also put a link to USC Upstate's men's basketball website. So you guys can follow for team news, team updates throughout the season. But guys, thanks so much for joining us here on Edge Sports Network today for another interview. And as always, we'll see you guys next time.